Hello everybody. Let's talk about polymeric materials. Now let's begin. The word polymer literally means many parts. A polymeric solid material may be considered to be one that contains many chemically bonded parts or units that themselves are bonded together to form a solid. Applications of two industrially important polymeric materials are first one is plastic and second one is elastomer. Plastics are a large and varied group of synthetic materials that are processed by forming or molding into shape. Just as we have many types of materials such as aluminium and copper, we have many types of plastics such as polyethylene and nylon. Plastics can be divided into two classes and there, first one is thermoplastics and second one is thermosetting plastics. These, these two classes depends on how they are structurally chemically bonded. Elastomers, rubbers can be elastically deformed a large amount when a force is applied to when and can return to their original shape when force is released. Now let's talk about thermoplastics. Thermoplastics require heat to make them formable and after cooling retain the shape they were formed into. These materials can be reheated and reformed into new shapes a number of times without significant change in their properties. Most thermoplastics consist of very long main chains of carbon atoms covalently together. Sometimes nitrogen, oxygen or sulfur atoms are also covalently bonded in the main molecular chain. Pendant atoms or groups of atoms are covalently bonded in the main chain atoms. In thermoplastics, the long molecular chains are bonded to each other by semi by secondary bonds. Now let's talk about thermosetting plastics or thermosets. Thermosetting plastics formed into a permanent shape and cured or set by a chemical reaction cannot be remelted and reformed into another shape but degrade or decompose upon being heated to too high temperature. Thus, thermosetting plastics cannot be recycled. The term thermosetting implies that heat is required to permanently set the plastics. There are, however, many so-called thermosetting plastics that set or cure at room temperature by a chemical reaction only. Most thermosetting plastics consist of a network of carbon atoms covalently bonded into a thermoset network structure. Plastics are important engineering materials for many reasons. They have a wide range of properties, some of which are unattainable from any other materials and in most cases they are relatively low in cost. The use of plastics for mechanical engineering design offers many advantages which include elimination of parts through engineering design with plastics, elimination of, of many finishing operations, simplified assembly, weight savings, noise reduction and in some cases elimination of the need for lubrication of some parts. Plastics are also very useful for many electrical engineering designs mainly because of their excellent insulative properties. Electrical electronic applications for plastic materials include connectors, switches, relays, TV tuner components, coil forms, integrated circuit boards and computer components. Now let's talk about industrial polymerization methods. At this stage, one must certainly be wondering how plastic materials are produced industrially. The answer to this question is not simple since many different processes are used and new ones are constantly being developed. 
to start with basic raw materials such as natural gas petroleum and coal are used to produce the basic chemicals for the polymerization process these chemicals are then polymerized by different processes into plastic materials such as granules pellets powders or liquids that are further processed into finished products the chemical polymerization processes used to produce plastic materials that are complex and diverse the chemical engineer plays a major role in the development and industrial utilization now let's talk about bulk polymerization there is a figure for this one and here we can see this one is the agitator and this is the reactor for making the plastic and this one is this and this one are the heating and cooling jacket and here there are monomers the monomer and activator are mixed in a reactor that is heated and cooled as re required in this system this process is used extensively for condensation polymerization where one monomer may be charged into the reactor and another added slowly the bulk process can be used for many condensation polymerization reactions because of the low heats of reaction now let's talk about solid polymerization and the figure is here and the other things are the exactly the previous one and here there is monomers and as well as solvent in this process the monomer is dissolved into a non reactive solvent that contains a catalyst the heat released by the reaction is absorbed by the solvent and so the reaction rate is reduced now let's talk about suspension polymerization and there's a picture for this one and this and this one and this one is also the similar like the previous one and here there is water medium and also there is monomer droplets with initiator and there is agitator the function of agitator to keep particles in suspension in this process the monomer is mixed with a catalyst and then dispersed as a suspension in water in this process the heat released by the reaction is absorbed by the water after polymerization the polymerized product is separated and dried this process is commonly used to produce many of the vinyl type polymers such as polyvinyl chloride polystyrene polyacrylo polyacrylonitrile and polymethyl methylcrylate now let's talk about emulsion polymerization and there is a figure for this one and here we have a water medium with initiator in solution and there is also monomer droplets with surfactant to keep particles in suspension and in this process the polymerization process is similar to the suspension process since it is carried out in water however an emulsifier is added to disperse the monomer into very small particles in addition to the batch polymerization process just described many types of mass continuous polymerization process have been developed and research and development in this area continues one very important process is union carbide's gas phase unipole process for producing low density polyethylene in this process gaseous ethylene monomer along with some common monomer are fed continuously into a fluidized based reactor into which a special catalyst is added the advantage of this process are lower temperature for polymerization and lower pressure many industrial plants are already using the unipole process and there is a schematic diagram for this one so at the center there is fluid bed reactor and the fluid bed reactor fluid goes to cycle compressor and from cycle compressor the fluid goes to cycle cooler then from cycle cooler cooler 
the fluid again go to the fluid bed reactor and here ethylene and com some uh, common omer is added and also catalyst is added here and from this fluid bed reactor the fluid goes to product discharge system also from product discharge system the fluid goes to the fluid bed reactor and the product from the uh, uh, product discharge system goes to purge also goes to granular polyethylene to blending and store for blending and storage and in product discharge system nitrogen is added and from here from this product discharge system the uh, product goes to compressor and uh, from compressor the product goes to again the cycle compression and there is a practical application for this one that is the industrial application and finally thank you for being with me